Good day. Welcome to Fresh Manna Ministries, hosted by Reverend Dr. Alan G. Jenkins, Jr., and yours truly, Benjamina Jenkins, and a host of pastors, evangelists, teachers, ministers, prayer warriors, and partners. Together, we are on a mission to encourage, equip, and strengthen the body of Christ and to win lost souls for the kingdom of heaven. Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. I hope we're very clear. We did have some static there as uh, Benjamina was doing her introduction. Uh, So I hope I'm uh, open and clear to everyone uh, who is out there. We just thank and praise God uh, this morning. We thank you, Lord, for being in our midst. We ask blessings and more blessings and more blessings upon each and every person uh, who has come on uh, this morning. Well, we're going to jump right into uh, the message. Um, It's called, the uh, title is An Anatomy, An Anatomy uh, of Faith. And, uh, you know, put on your thinking caps uh, this morning. Put on your thinking caps this morning. I don't know whether it's going to be a straight teach or a straight preach or a combination of both. Amen. Well, uh, scripture that we read into your hearing, it said God, by faith, uh, did all things, all things seen and unseen. Faith is the substance of all things. And that Hebrews 11, 1 through uh, 3. And we're going to touch uh, upon each one of those areas. And uh, lately, uh, we've been just developing on the scriptures that have been set before us. Uh, in the verses that are read and the teaching. And uh, as on a Thursday, uh, we had a a pretty good experience. Uh, We moved through, and uh, we were talking about uh, how uh, the goodness of God uh, is uh, within uh, the framework of our uh, being. So, static. So we we thank God. I'm hearing a little static. That's why I'm kind of stuttering uh, there. I hope you all aren't hearing that. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Lord God. Be with us. Transform uh, these words uh, that on my lips, Lord God, into a spiritual uh, motivation, motivator, that we might see more clearly who you are. Hebrews 11, 1 through Two, one through three, and anatomy of faith. When I was thinking about this, uh, uh, I thought about when I was in college and I had a uh, a human physiology class, and that was one of the hardest uh, classes that uh, that I ever had. And uh, it, it was the human body and and anatomy of the body and how it functioned. And I found myself uh, uh, just sweating, sweating, sweating. I went to the instructor and I said, I'm having a real hard time uh, with uh, uh, this class. Is there anything uh, you could do, anything that I could do, anything that you can assign me to do uh, in order to, uh, you know, I might pass this course because uh, the structure of the class just seems to be so overwhelming uh, to me. So she said, she said, you go, and if you can develop on something in connection with the anatomy, if you can uh, adjust something, and if you can bring it back to me, uh, then I'll, I'll uh, uh, you know, curb, as they say, uh, the course uh, for you in particular. Uh, I said, okay, I leave, I go, and I start working and working and going through books and finding uh, things in connection with the anatomy, human anatomy. And uh, I brought it back uh, to her, and um, she said, this is really, really good work. Uh, She said, well, what are your expectations with this work? She said, "Uh, I'm asking you, can I use your work uh, in order to present it in future classes here. And uh, I, I said, sure. 
She said, well, uh, what would you expect? I said, well, if I can get a C out of the class, um, I'd be very happy with that. And she said, oh, okay. Uh, the time goes on, time goes on. She comes back and she starts talking about what I had produced, what I had presented uh, to the other uh, students in the class. And uh, she mentioned that, you know, uh, uh, Alan Jenkins had uh, put this together. I'm going to present it to you all. And it, it's a, a great uh, expose on uh, the human anatomy. And she came to me after one of the classes and she said, um, you know what, uh, you asked for a C just to get by. She said, but this was A or A plus work, but I'm going to give you a C because you asked for a C. <laughs> and I tell you, I almost hit the floor. <laughs> My knees buckled. It was what I asked for, and I only had faith enough uh, to ask for something that was just going to get me by. And the anatomy uh, was so precise in what I had produced for her that she used it beyond the class. Uh, but I felt so discouraged in the fact that, man, you should have asked for an A, a B, uh, uh, at, at least. And I, I just walked away. But that was the anatomy, and this is how I short-circuited myself, not having faith enough in myself that the work that I did and how my movements were uh, could have meant so much more and did, in, in fact, turn out to be so much more for the other students. Anatomy, anatomy, anatomy. Well, this morning we're talking about the anatomy of faith. And I'm going to read a scripture here for you. Uh, when we read Romans chapter 14, um, uh, verses 20, uh, 23, uh, it reads, But if he has doubts about what he eats, God condemns him when he eats it because his action is not based on faith. And anything that is not based on faith is sin. Wow. We learn that anything that isn't a product of uh, this faith life is a product of sin based on Romans. In Hebrews 11.6, we see that without this uh, quality called faith, we can never be able to please the Lord. We know that we are saved by faith, and where is that Ephesians 2, 8 through 9? But just how do we go about living every day? The, 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 just the, the, the base things of life by faith. Well, sisters and brothers, Thankfully, the Bible doesn't leave us in the dark concerning the walk of faith. It, it sheds light uh, on this important uh, topic. Some of us think faith is, is one thing or another, but we're going to look today uh, as the Lord gives us time. I would like to teach on the topic, the anatomy of faith. I keep saying that because this is an anatomy, a breakdown. It is going through the subject matter. I would like to tell you what faith is not as well as what it is. What I want to show you um, uh, this morning is how this faith works and how it will work for you. Let's look at this together and consider an anatomy of faith. Amen. Number one, the uh, Fallacies, fallacies surrounding faith. Faith is not a blind leap, my sisters and brothers. There are those who feel that a life lived by faith is the life of a fool. Faith, oh, that's foolish. No, you got to know what you want. You got to plan it every day. Faith is flimsy. Faith is somewhere out there. Oh, no, you can't live by faith. You got to have substance. Many people speculate that faith is nothing more than a leap into the dark. However, faith is much more than just walking around blind waiting for God to bump into you. 
Faith is your response to the promises of God and of life in God. God says, I will lead you. Guess what? Faith responds with, I will follow. God says, I will feed you. Faith says, I will eat. God says, I will meet your needs. And faith says, it's done. Faith is never a leap into the dark. It, it's always based on uh, the the firmest of foundations. <clears throat> the word of God, the firmest of foundations, the word of God. The person who really walks in faith never walks through life blind. Hear me clearly. No, the person who really walks in faith never walks through life blind. They always know what is ahead based on the word of God. Amen? Faith is not a blank check, my sisters and brothers. The name, the the, the name it and claim it philosophy that, that's all out there that permeates uh, the church today, just name it and you can claim it. You, it's yours. All you got to do is uh, uh, give. All you got to do is uh, press on, press, 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 and, and, and it's yours. Well, people have been taught that if they uh, want something from God, then they uh, they need to pray about it and believe it and and then look for it to happen. There are many folks who have become discouraged in their faith and disappointed with God because he didn't do it the way they wanted it done, like they wanted it done, and then they question God as to how you could do this, God. Uh, I wanted it my way. Faith is not a blank check, sisters and brothers. God is not our little cosmic Santa Claus uh, just waiting for us to place our orders and, and then drive away with anything and everything we desire. Faith doesn't work like that. Remember, I said anything that is not of faith is sin. The implications of this way of thinking, watch this, if this is true, then God is uh, not more than a genie in a bottle. God is so much more than our expectations have for him. God, he grants us what he grants us by virtue of our faith based on the word of God. Let me remind you uh, that the uh, charismatic name it and claim it uh, crowd, the people who do that, have missed the mark. God is not a name it and claim it God. God is about far bigger things, far greater things than just waiting for me to come to him with my wants and needs. No, 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 my sisters and brothers, this is not a wish list when we go to God. No, faith is not a bad choice. Hear me clearly. That was number three. Faith is not a bad choice. There are those who would say that it's foolish to walk in total and utter dependence upon the Lord. Yeah, some folk got to, you got to have your own thing. You got to have a plan. You got to do it your way. Well, I argue that these people don't know God. These people argue that God is an unknown, and I submit to you that God is a known entity. How do I know? Because he lives in me. How do I know? Because I know he lives in you that he is an unseen force, they say, uh, uh, w w with man cannot interact or uh, fellowship with. Not so. Many folk call the Christian who lives by faith a fool. However, the Christian who determines to truly live uh, their life by total faith uh, in his heavenly uh, father, with our heavenly father, faith in our father will never be disappointed with God, nor will we struggle through life blindly. There will be a deep-seated and deep-settled assurance that God is in absolute control of all situations and that his will be done no matter 
what? God's will, not my will, but thy will be accomplished in life, in the life of the believer. As believers, we can either choose to please the Lord or we can choose to please ourselves. Are you with me? There's only two ways, two ways about this. Please the Lord or please ourselves. If we are determined that we are going to please the Lord, then we are going to have to walk how? By faith in him and in his word alone. Amen. These are a few of the things that faith is is not. Let me let me show you what faith is not. Faith faith does not walk in a way where we we call it out and we expect it to 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 happen. Allow me to take just a few minutes to to look at what faith is. I just told you what faith is not. Let me go back over that for you just a minute here. What I have on my notes here, it's not a blind leap. Amen. Faith is not a blank check. Amen. Faith is not a bad choice in life. Faith is faith, and it comes by hearing, and faith comes by the hearing of the word of God. Don't get fooled. Don't get fooled. Uh, Number two, let me... uh, give you some facts surrounding in this anatomy uh, surrounding faith. Uh, Faith is none of those things that I just talked about, but you want to know what is it, Pastor Jacob? Faith is defined and described in verse 1. Remember, we're going to go back to the verses. In verse 1, if you notice uh, that faith makes, makes, faith makes things that are hoped for, as real as the things that are, and it provides the unshakable evidence of those things that are ours as a result of our relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, maybe I need to repeat that. What is it? What did I say? Faith is de- defined and described in verse one. Things that are hoped for as real as the things that are, and it provides the unshakable evidence of those things that are are ours as a result of our relationship with Jesus Christ. (laughs) In other words, it brings the future within the present and makes the invisible seen. Amen. I said put on your thinking caps this morning. Well, thankfully, the author of Hebrews uh, did not leave us in the dark concerning what all this sureness and certainty is based on. I said sureness and certainty. These words just popped out. Sureness and certainty, talking about faith. In verse 2, the writer of Hebrews speaks of the elders and says that by their faith, come on, stay with by their faith, by your faith, they earned a good report from God. By their Faith, they earned a good report from God. I'm not talking about name it and claim it. I'm not talking about going in your player closet and popping out and expecting something to be sitting right outside the door. I said, faith, faith, this is how we earn a good report from God, and this is how God blesses us. Amen? Then he goes on to speak of their faith. Who you say their faith? Yeah, let's do a rundown here of their faith, and in every instance, uh, either stated or implied, is the promise of God. Faith dealing with the promise of God. I know we get to talking about small stuff, little stuff. Oh Lord, uh, uh, heal me of this cold. Uh, oh, oh, Lord, uh, help me, uh, you know, uh, with this backache. Oh, Lord, oh, wait a minute. If you put your hat on and you put your coat on and you didn't go out there in that rain, uh, you might not have had a cold. So now you're, you're implying that uh, God uh, wasn't with you when you went out there and you did what you shouldn't have done. 
Uh, wait a minute, you shouldn't have lifted up that box like you lifted up. Uh, wait a minute, you should have took one step at a time to go up those steps so that your knees wouldn't be aching in 20 minutes from now. And we expect God to turn around and by, by, by what we call faith. No, these are implied things. Faith is that God will make a way. I'm talking about the deeper context of faith. I'm not talking about our little puny, help me with this and help me with that. Oh, oh Lord, I want peanut butter, uh, 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 but I don't want jelly. I want jelly, but I don't want peanut butter. No, I'm talking about faith. I'm talking about faith. He goes on to speak of their faith. And in every instant, either stated or implied, is the promise of God. Let's talk about the promises of God. In verse 3, verse 3, the creation account is reliable because it is based on the word of God. When you say the creation account, yes, in the beginning, the creation account is reliable because it's based on the word of God. What is the word of God? The Bible, my sisters and brothers. Faith, faith, faith. Verse number four, Abel offered a more pleasing sacrifice because of faith in a promise. Cain slew Abel, but Abel, Abel was the one that God received. Why? Because he had faith in God. He believed in the promises of God. Abel offered a more pleasing sacrifice because of faith in God, faith in God's promise. In verse 5 through 6, Enoch, Enoch received, he, watch out now, the first airplane ride, he was taken up. Enoch was taken up because he had faith in the promises of God. Faith in, wait a minute, Noah, what about Noah, my man? Uh, in verse 7, Noah built the ark and survived the flood because his faith floated on the promises of the Lord. That's right. Noah was invited into the ark. He wasn't pushed into the ark. He was invited into the ark. In verse uh, 8 through 19, Abraham left home and his country, and he went into a foreign land. He offered his son as a sacrifice to God and looked for an eternal city. His faith was based on the unshakable foundations of the word of God. Now, hear me clearly. I'm talking about deep-seated faith. I'm not talking about stuff faith. You've got to walk in faith. You've got to believe God. You've got to have faith in God. Isaac, Abraham, and Joseph all died in faith, looking to the fulfillment of the promises of God. He has promised you. He has promised me. He has promised us. And our faith has to be strong enough not to fall flat on our faces when we ask for something that didn't happen. Someone is, is sickly and it didn't. No, you must have faith in the promises of God that's beyond the condition my sisters and my brother. Moses, Moses, he left Egypt and led Israel. Wait a minute now. He followed the Lord by faith, all in a response to the promise of God. I'm going to take you out of this bondage. I'm going to take you out of this world concept. I'm going to take you out of the politics of 2024. I'm going to take you out of the mindset of an evil world and anything that is not based in faith in God, that God has total and absolute control of all things, as we read in that Romans, is sin. Sin. It's not about who you're going to vote for. It's who you know has control of every vote that's cast. Who you know who sets up leadership. Who you know sets up governments and tear down governments. Who you know is able to do beyond, far beyond what humanity. It's not who did what and who said what and who won this and who won that. Evil. Evil is permeating the earth, north, south, east, and west, the four corners of the earth. We've got to have faith in God. Verse 30, Israel conquered Jericho because of the 
faith in the promises of God. Are you with me? Then we go back to Hebrews and uh, 31. Rahab was saved because of her faith in the Lord's promises. Do you remember Rahab who hid the spies and her whole family because she had faith? She had faith. She transitioned, and her faith caused her to survive under the devastation of God's hands and God's people. Wait a minute. In verse 32 through 40, thousands, thousands, thousands of people down throughout the ages have, have responded to God's promises with faith, my sisters and my brothers. And they have seen him do great wonders. It's your faith. Yeah, your prayers get a, it's, it's a, a road to, to God's ear. But you have a deep-seated responsibility to reckon with your faith in God. Oh, my goodness. With all these things in mind, what is faith? Come on, Jenkins. Faith is the assurance that God will do exactly what he has promised to do. <laughs> can, can, can you settle that right there? Can you settle that right now? Right there? Can you, what is faith? Faith is the assurance that God will do exactly what he has promised to do. Anything based on guesswork, peace of heart, wishful thinking, acting as if it may or it may not. That's not our job. Our job is to have faith in God. Anything other than faith in God is sin. Anything other than faith in God ends in failure and disappointment. Oh, somebody's hearing what I'm saying this morning. I'm talking about going the next mile, hitting the next mile. I'm talking about taking it up a little higher. I'm talking about having faith in God who made everything. God who said, let there be, and it is. God who is eternal in his being. God who has no mother, no father. God who always was always will be, always is. God is a God who responds to a people's faith in himself and his promises, faith in God and faith in the word of God that has been handed down to us. Am I moving along here? If you climb the top of a high building, watch out now. You've heard this. I, I, this all came back. If you climbed up on top of, of, of a high building and said, I'm going to jump off of here and, and, and not hit the ground, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have faith. I'm going to jump off of here and not hit the ground. I believe that God is going to make me fly. Wait a minute. I believe God will make I think I can jump, and I believe that God is going to make me fly. Well, you say I have prayed for it and asked him to hold me up. I have peace in my heart that he will make me fly. I believe that this is his will. So I'm going to leap off the top of my house, leap off the top of the building, and he's going to make me fly. Well, my sisters and my brothers, before you jump, you need to write out a, a, a will, last will and testament. Uh, please tell somebody what to do with the body because you are probably uh, going to die upon impact. Uh, don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. Don't, don't be foolish, my sisters and my brothers. And sometimes we have that impact because we believe that what we tell God, that what we tell God, what we tell God that we want, he going to do it. And so what am I saying? Be prepared for the impact. 
God will do what God is going to do the way God wants to do it no matter what. The only thing we can do is thank God when he does it, and by grace we are saved, and by grace we achieve, and by grace we acquire, and by blessedness God gives us, God feeds us, God keeps us, God keeps the minds, God keeps the body that sometimes we torment. God knows, God knows by faith. We thank God, and it becomes our testimony. Many people have become disappointed with God because, oh, my Lord, he didn't do something uh, that we told him to do. You, 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 you've got to remember that faith is not, not just a, a rope or a, a, a lasso that we throw around God's neck and make him do our will like, we, like people do a horse. Uh, God cannot be lassoed like in, in our puny, punny minds. God is God. It's not the same button uh, we push to force God into doing what we want. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Many people have prayed for things they wanted and thought they needed, and, and their requests were denied. You know why? It wasn't in God's will. It wasn't in God's way. And your faith, your faith, Faith may have been lacking uh, that God would do it and God would do it God's way. Hear me clearly. I I said put on your thinking caps. I'm just excited this morning. Many people become bitter against God and and they stop following God uh, to a greater extent. Yeah, I hit the church. Yeah, 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 so it's times. Yeah, yeah, but they stop following God by faith. I'm talking about absolute 100% faith in God. Sometimes the things folk pray for uh, were legitimate. Uh, like the healing of, of, of a, re- a relative, a new job, some problems that we have. This is legitimate, and it's okay. However, when they forget that they haven't been given a clear promise from God concerning that situation, they are in for a disappointment. you got to get with God. you got to know. And as the sister said, you jump on that prayer line. Praise the Lord for the 6 a.m. and praise the Lord for the 6 p.m. prayer line uh, that you all got going on because you just don't know where God is in the heart of the person that is vocalizing and verbalizing. The prayer may not hit you now, but it may hit you later on. And according to their faith and according to how God touches them, these are just not rote because the Word tells us be not like uh, the the the. The, the the unsaved, be not like them who just go on and with petition, vain petition, over and over and over. This is what they do. This is what the, uh, the, the chanting and the mantras are, over and over and over and over, expecting God uh, to do something. No, say it, let God have it, and by faith, with expectation, let God handle it. Are you with me? We can pray about anything we want to. Then we can hope that it will come to pass. But we can only have faith in those things which God has already promised to bring to pass. He promised there'd be a hill. He promised uh, prosperity, not in that crazy prosperity that we see going on out there right now. Oh, my Lord, stop, Jenkins, don't digress. Well, when I expect God to do as he has promised, that is faith. What did I just say? When I expect God to do as he has promised, that is faith. I, with expectation. With with expectation, I expect him to do. With expectation. When I expect him to do as I wish, then that's presumption. Do I need to repeat that? Do I need to repeat that? 
when we pray about anything we want and we can hope that it will come to pass, but we can only have faith in those things which God has already promised to bring to pass. When I expect God to do as he promised, that's faith. When I expect him to do as I wish, then that's presumption. God will honor the first and ignore the second in that statement I just gave you. God knows what God is doing. You hear me? God knows what God is doing. God will honor us. Our prayers of hope versus prayers of faith. Watch this. Watch this. Our prayers of of faith versus our prayers of hope. I need you to sit, I need that to sink in. You have a prayer of hope and then you have a prayer of faith. And the line sometimes gets blurred. I want it to sink in. Our prayers of hope versus our prayers of faith. When we pray and when I pray that my neighbor will be saved, I can have faith that God will save that neighbor. If they will turn to Jesus. However, I can only hope that that neighbor will be saved because that neighbor may decide not to receive Jesus Christ. I, I, I said, put on your thinking cap. Help me with this. Stay with me. Stay with me. When I pray that my need might be met, I can believe that it will be met because God has promised to meet my needs. Philippians 4.19. I had scriptures all along here, but I'm moving right along. It's time for me to come down to draw to conclusion here. When I pray that my need might be met, I can believe that it will be met because God has promised to meet it. Amen. Not because I prayed for it, but because God has promised to me that Philippians 4.19, when I pray that a person will be healed, watch this, I can hope that it will happen. I know God has the power to heal, but I don't know that it is God's will to heal. Oh, thinking cap, thinking cap, thinking cap. I don't have his promise in the matter to heal a particular person or particular persons. It's his will be done. I can hope and by faith I can believe that God is able to heal. What am I saying? I'm taking it out of my hands and leaving it in God's hands. Thinking cap, when I pray for the safety of my children, I, I, I can hope that they will be safe. You hear what I'm saying? But I can't have the absolute assurance that they will be safe because I don't have the Lord's word on it in particular instances. I hope and I pray that they will be safe. And I believe just like those shootings that just happened, every parent of every one of those children prayed for safety for their children, prayed for safety for their children. But God knows. Oh, wow, Pastor Jenkins, I, I don't need a little compassion in what you're saying. I can hope they'll be safe. But I cannot have the absolute assurance in myself that they will be safe. By faith, I believe that God will keep them safe. And not my will be done, but thy will be done. Oh, it's a little heavy, a little heavy. When God says it, be certain, be certain that the word of God has the final say on everything. And if the word has it, you can count on it. 
being just as he has said. Therefore, anything that is promised in the book can serve as the basis for genuine faith. Oh, man, Pastor Jenkins. Oh, man. Ah, oh, you're taking me somewhere. You're taking, uh, I'm taking me somewhere. That's why I keep saying what I'm saying. I'm taking me somewhere. This stuff flowed out of here, and the Spirit just didn't produce it. So what is faith? Let's get ready to close out. So what is faith? Faith is simply the deep, settled, deep, settled, settled assurance that God will do exactly what he has promised to do what he has promised to do. All right. I'm getting ready to close with the function of faith. What exactly will faith do for you? Watch this. After we're saved, there are certain functions which faith performs in our lives. Wait a minute. Would you say, Pastor Nick? I said, after we are saved, there are certain functions which faith performs in our lives. You say, what is that? Let's let's look at a few things. Let's let's look at a few things. Number one, faith calms our fears. Faith calms our fears. Oh my goodness! Only only uh, twenty of them. I'm doing good. I'm talking fast. Faith calms our fears. It doesn't mean that we're sheltered from bad things, but in the midst of bad things, we have his promise that he will calm our fears. Romans 8.28. We all know Romans 8.28. How about 1 Corinthians 15.57? How about Second Corinthians four seventeen? He calms our fears. Calms our fears. Once again, Romans eight twenty eight. He calms our fears. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. He calms our fears. Second Corinthians four seventeen. Faith calms our fears, not some overwhelming thing, not something that comes over us that that, that knocks out fear. Faith calms our fears. You say, what faith? Faith that God has promised that I would never leave you nor forsake you. Faith calms our fears. Number two, faith cushions our falls. Wait a minute. What's that mean, Pastor Jenkins? We are not immune from the temptations of sin. But when and if we fall, we have God's promise. Watch this. It is possible for the child of God to fall down sometime, but we know we, we can never fall out. We can fall down, but we, but we never fall out. You, you can act like you fall out with God, but if you're saved, you cannot... Fall out with God, because God is in control. There is no fallout with God. You can fall down, but you can't fall out. Some of us have children, and sometimes we 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 we, uh, we can we we can we can fall down in our relationship with them. Sometimes we can say that we fall out with them. We fall out with them, but guess what? Just a matter of time, in, uh, behind a meal, behind a conversation, behind a who needs what, uh, who, who needs this and who needs that, and all of a sudden uh, that fallout is gone. He's promised us. We have his promise. It is possible for the child of God to fall down, but we can never fall out with God. John ten twenty eight. If we do fall, we have his word that we can be forgiven when we turn to him in repentance. First John 1 John 1.9, this is not an excuse to fall, trust me, but it's an encouragement to those who have and those who will fall, because we will, you will, thought, word, or deed. Oh, come on now. Oh, he's just such a nice, oh, she just not, just, just, uh, oh, no. Uh, some thoughts, some words, and some deeds. Come on. Faith confirms our future. I don't know 
what I'll face tomorrow. But I know that when all my tomorrows are finished, I have a future secured in heaven with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I said, calms our fears. This is the preacher part right here. Cushions our falls. Come on now. Uh, confirms our future. Amen. And, and claims God's finest for us. Amen. Faith doesn't uh, gorge itself on the slop of the world. It sets its sights higher. Faith believes that God will be true to his word, and there faith responds to the word, acts on the word, and receives the fulfillment of the word. Come on now. God is in all things. You got to learn that God can do because God is willing to do. Amen. Uh, faith challenges our failures. It challenges. Uh, what do I mean uh, by that? Uh, when we fail, when we when we get discouraged, faith lifts us up. Faith says that we can be all that God wants us to be. Faith accepts uh, the the notion that we we do not have to settle for second theft. Faith says that we can have. Everything that God has for us and that we can have it and we can have it more abundantly. Faith says that we do not have to live to the lower standard of the world. Faith just takes God at his word and serves and serves. Jesus said, I have not come to be served, but I came to serve. And finally, faith calls Faith calls. Faith calls our friends. Faith says to those around us that, 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 that what God has done uh, here for me, he can do for you in your life. Faith reaches out to those uh, who don't know Jesus Christ because it knows that everyone who turns to Christ for salvation will be saved. Faith believes God's promises concerning salvation. Salvation comes by faith. Faith, my sisters and brothers, faith, faith, faith. Let me conclude. Let me conclude right here. God and God's will is that we live by faith. It's not the blind leap of the foolish, not the blank check of, of, of misinformation, but the deep settled assurance that what God has said he would do. He is more than able, more than willing to do. Faith, my sisters and my brothers. Faith. Faith in God. And as I said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Anything that's born that is not of faith, as Romans says, is sin. I thank you so much. I ask God's blessings on you throughout the rest of this day and into tomorrow. Some of y'all just be laid back. Some of y'all may look at a little TV and ministries, and some of y'all may put on your glad stuff and head on out and Get to a, a place of fellowship, whatever lies before, whatever lies before. Amen. We have a blessed assurance by faith in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join us next time. And remember to subscribe, Fresh Manna Ministries. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number 6, verse 24 to 26. God bless you. Have a great day.